A link between rare neurological complications and the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine is now being investigated by federal health officials. Yeah, the CDC and the FDA have launched an investigation into the potential link between the J&J &J vaccine and rare cases of a neurological complication known as Guillain-Barre syndrome that can lead to muscle weakness and possible paralysis too. This is one of the many things we wanted to ask Dr. Dina Hawkinson from the University of Kansas Health System about. So he's joining us live to talk more about this. So doctor, in May, the CDC said it had identified those rare but serious blood clots potentially linked to the J&J &J vaccine. Mm -hmm. Now there's this potential link to Guillain-Barre syndrome. Is this a greater concern than the blood clots or really is the message that these events are extremely rare? What do you say? I would agree with you on that last point. Uh, the message is that these events are extremely rare. Uh, based on the CDC per their website, you know, we do have, I believe, between uh, 80 to 160 cases per week in the United States of this Guillain-Barre. Um, I've seen other numbers such as 60 to 120 cases per week. Normally, we know that they can occur from various reasons. Certainly, I've recently saw one in the hospital due to a bacterial infection. We know that other virus infections can cause it, such as influenza infection as well. So I think it is very rare, and I wouldn't show too much concern right now. I think it's still good to be transparent parent and let the general public know about that. But just based on the total numbers, uh, it is a very rare event. Yeah, it's such a, a bizarre complication. Right. Uh, doctor, is this something that happens? Does Guillain-Barre happen because your body is fighting something? Is that what causes it in the first place? You know, I don't think we really know exactly what causes it. What we do think is maybe there is some antigenic mimicry. So basically there is something maybe on that bacteria mm. or that virus. Um, that your body is uh, reacting against. And there might be a similar protein or similar um, uh, molecule on your body and your cells. So your body starts to fight that in that reason, uh, for that reason, uh, you know, kind of by mistake almost. And mm. so there is that, that set of inflammation there, that source of inflammation, and you have that Guillain-Barre or that, that neurological um, effect on there. And as Dr. Hawkins mentioned just a moment ago, he's seen this in other cases, not just related to COVID, which is important to remember moving forward. Mm -hmm. Doctor, two different municipal governments in our area have moved back toward that recommendation of everyone wearing a mask in public indoor spaces, no matter if they're vaccinated or not. Independence and Wyandotte County made those announcements last week. What do you recommend right now for patients? Are you wearing masks out in public? What should people be doing vaccinated or not? Yeah, you know, again, uh, the guidance we do have is for vaccinated people, but we do understand that not 100% of the population is fully vaccinated, but yet we see everybody without a mask. So I think we understand and we start there. We understand that even unvaccinated people are unmasked. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea. I'm still not going out very much uh, in those indoor spaces, really still trying to, to do a lot um, outdoors. Uh, recently, a few weeks ago, I stopped wearing my mask at the gym. I will probably restart that now as well. So hmm. I think with understanding that the Delta variant is out there, it is spreading, uh, there is a high prevalence of it, and that not everybody is fully vaccinated. I think if you individually take on that risk and understand and do that risk assessment, and it feels more comfortable to you to wear those masks indoor, even if vaccinated, I think that's a good thing to do. Again, it's vaccination, but it's also those non-pharmaceutical interventions that we know help stop the spread, such as masking and distancing as well. I know somebody sitting at home is going, why? If I'm fully vaccinated, right. sure. why would I need to wear a mask, even though yeah. people around me um, might, you know, the cases might be going up. So what would you say to them? Mm -hmm. Does this mean the vaccine doesn't work? Why would you wear a mm -hmm. mask if you're vaccinated? No, absolutely the vaccine works. You know, now if you have other um, uh, conditions such as significant heart disease, significant lung disease, maybe you're on chemotherapy, you have cancer, for some other reason you're immunosuppressed, you do have a higher chance of maybe uh, having more of those symptoms of disease, maybe having to seek hospitalization. I know for myself, uh, otherwise healthy, but if I do get the disease, if I do get COVID-19, again, individually, I'm going to have to miss 10 days of work and isolate right. and be away from work. And I know a lot of people can't do that, even though physically I should be fine and I uh, will more than likely not have to seek medical attention. I will probably have just maybe one or two days of symptoms, if any at all. But it's just the fact that if I do have any symptoms, I have to get tested. 
I'm going to then be out of work for 10 days. Uh, you know, I can't afford to do that. I'm busy. A lot of people are busy. They can't afford to do that economically. So I think just taking more precautions to keep yourself individually safe is the best way moving forward. Thanks for coming on again, Dr. Hawkinson. Yeah.